What's up guys, Genius Pie Trap, and this is a video showing you the difference between the Oculus Rift DK1 and the Oculus Rift DK2. The DK2 was just released and I like it. There's some things I do like about it, some things I kind of like about the DK1 better, but uh, just wanted to make a video showing you guys some of the differences here. Probably the most easiest thing to recognize here is the actual shape. The DK1 is a little bit larger and kind of a rectangle shape. The DK2 is smaller, more compact. I do feel the DK2, I haven't put these on a scale or anything, it seems a little bit heavier actually, which is kind of surprising. The I can't really tell the difference though once I put, put it on, so I mean it's not uh, something that is uncomfortable. In fact, I think the DK2 fits, at least it fits my head better. It get, it's uh, closer to the face, it's, it lets less light in, it's easier, it seems easier to adjust and a better fit. Again, that might be different depending on the shape of your head. Another thing I like about the DK2 is the power button right on the top of the unit, whereas on the DK1, you had this external box here with a power button so it, it was just very very inconvenient this box in general is super inconvenient about the DK1 it was kind of like a central hub that everything plugged into there's also a box you can kind of see it in the corner right here kind of hooked up to my computer that it's similar but way less of a pain there's no switches on it there's no nothing like that again the power button right here, awesome. The ease of hookup is way better too. Also, I like is the, on the DK1, all these wires are hardwired in. So if there's any problem, it's it was just hardwired in. You couldn't replace this cable. You couldn't do anything with it. The DK2, thankfully, has this little pop-up here, and you can actually unplug these cables like this to make it completely portable or I guess it can what am I trying to say here you can basically really break it down another big difference the DK2 has the little camera or sensor that fits on the top of your computer monitor or wherever you're going to be gaming now let me just quick say something about that the thing I hate about that is, me personally, when I was using the Oculus Rift, sometimes I sit in front of my computer and do it, and then sometimes, especially when guests are over, I'll put it in front of my television where my surround sound is. That way, it, it, to me, it's more immersive than headphones if you have the surround sound going and you're using the Oculus Rift. This makes it pretty inconvenient to do something like that because it's something that you have to move, you have to reset up. Kind of a pain in the butt. But it's worth it. It works so much better. It's so much of a more one-to-one -one feel that you know, definitely worth having that camera and I will gladly put up with it. Speaking of the performance wise, DK2 definitely looks better. Less of a much less of a screen door effect. It just works generally better. Now, I played a lot of the DK1, and I would get motion sickness after a while. I could only maybe at tops play half an hour, 45 minutes. And even if I wouldn't play for a while, I would get motion sickness after maybe even 10 minutes. DK2, I have not found, I haven't played a lot of games on it so far, but I have not found a game that even gives me motion sickness. It works awesome. Very, very excited about that. I, I know a lot of people were worried about the whole motion sickness thing. Man, I think the DK2 really has improved on that whole thing, at least for me. And hopefully it'll just get better, I think, as software goes. Also on the DK2, which is new, there's a little plug here where it's got a USB thing to plug external an external accessory or something like that um, I would be going to guess that would be used for something like the stem controllers 
or stem sensors that are coming out soon, which I am will be getting and doing a video on. Um, yeah, other than that, that's uh, they're kind of very similar. Now, I'll, I'll quick also touch on one thing I don't like is here we have. Let me push this out of the way here. Here's one thing I'll say about kind of an unimportant thing, but something that I definitely noticed. Here's the DK1 packaging that it came in. It came in this nice, cool plastic briefcase. I mean, it had buckles on it. You opened it up, and everything fit inside. And it really felt like you had something special when you opened it, right? It was like you were getting something state of the art that it came in this cool briefcase. The D the DK2, on the other hand, comes in this cardboard box. Yeah, it's got a handle. Uh, very, very disappointed in the, the packaging. Now, is it a big deal? No. I mean, if that kept the price a little bit lower, that's great. I'll take it. But I was disappointed not to see another hard plastic case. But again, not a big deal. Um, I'm glad I own the DK1 plastic case. So at least I have it. Again, better resolution on the DK2. And just all around, very nice improvements. If... Uh, I definitely recommend it. I really do. It's, uh, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I, I've been having fun with it. And it's a nice piece to add to anyone's collection. And hopefully the consumer version of the Oculus Rift even improves on it further. So, and that about wraps it up. If you guys got any questions about the Oculus Rift or DK1 versus DK2 or any of the differences, let me know. Put them in the comments. I'll try to answer as best I can. I also made a DK1 and DK2 setup video. Check those out if you're looking at how to set the Oculus Rift up. And that about is it. Talk to you guys later. Genius Pie Trap over and out. Later. Bye. Victory. The outcome was never really in doubt. My dust. Let's have a go at it. Godspeed, you magnificent bastard. Giddy up. It is good to be giant. Guts and glory.